Good morning and, uh, and good afternoon. My name is Don Wilkinson and uh, on behalf of my partners and colleagues at uh, Deloitte and in association with the Institute of Corporate Directors and of course our good friends at BCN TV, welcome all to the Director Series. Uh, the focus today is on audit committees and that's going to be twofold. One, uh, obviously fast approaching are those year-end audit committees, so we're going to be talking about some issues that you should be thinking about for those uh, upcoming uh, meetings. Uh, the second aspect would be a little longer term, so things you should put on your agenda for 2015 and, uh, and beyond. Now, we're uh, uh, tucked away in a warm uh, studio here in Toronto, um, broadcasting to you live to 16 cities uh, across the country. Now, uh, I actually just heard, I need to correct that, it's only 15 cities. Apparently, a uh, big snowstorm in Newfoundland, so unfortunately we lost our friends from uh, Newfoundland for, uh, for today. Um, the turnout for this session has been uh, fabulous. We have uh, well over 1,000 registered, so obviously a lot of uh, interest in the session. And uh, I will take this opportunity to wish you all a very happy New Year. Uh, trust you brought the New Year in in style, and uh, things are looking very promising and encouraging for uh, 2015. Uh, certainly, if your hockey fans are, uh, are good young Canadians, uh, beat their uh, arch rivals, the Russians, brought home the gold. Uh, a bit hard on the heart, but, uh, but a fabulous outcome. So very promising uh, start uh, on that uh, front. Uh, I will say, however, there are a few clouds on the horizon. Um, some of them are snow clouds. This is winter. This is Canada. Uh, but other of those clouds relate to some of the uh, issues in the global economy. So one only needs to think about what's happening over in uh, Europe with uh, risk of deflation. Of course, Japan's been fighting it for uh, decades, and, and the big growth engine uh, post-credit crisis with China, but now that is uh, slowing down. Uh, for us here in Canada, big story is, uh, is oil. Uh, oversupply, uh, lowering demand, and of course the Saudis aren't turning, turning off the taps. Uh, so that has very significant implications for us here in Canada and certainly for the companies uh, operating in that, uh, in that industry. Uh, I will say uh, amidst the clouds there is a bit of sunshine coming through. Uh, there is the big juggernaut just uh, south of us. Um, I won't say it's firing on all cylinders but some of the cylinders um, and sounding some encouraging growth signs uh, south of the border. Uh, so for those of you that export into that uh, market and uh, you also benefit from the low loonie, uh, obviously some, uh, some good news. These are obviously some, some important issues that uh, your boards uh, and aud audit committees are going to need to be uh, grappling and thinking about the risks uh, and the opportunities as you go through uh, your upcoming uh, meetings. And we'll be talking a bit more about those as we go along in our session. Let's, uh, let's take a look at our agenda for today. And, um, you know, just like I presume your agendas for this uh, year-end audit committee meeting, they're jam-packed. Uh, our, uh, our agenda today is, uh, is jam-packed with uh, lots of good information uh, as you work through your year-end audit committee meetings. Uh, the first topic we'll be touching on is audit quality. Uh, obviously, a lot of uh, discussion around audit quality subsequent to the uh, credit crisis, and I think very interesting in terms of some of the recent developments in 2014. Uh, here in Canada, there's going to be a lot more transparency, so uh, you'll be aware of the inspection results uh, for your particular company if it is selected for review. So more uh, transparency under the new uh, protocols. So we'll be hearing a, a bit more about that. Uh, internationally, I think there's some very interesting uh, developments uh, out there. And as we know, uh, Canada is not an island. Uh, things do wash across our shores. So my guess is there's some things that uh, you need to be thinking about in the longer term in terms of what, uh, what could impact you uh, and your organization. Uh, of course, it is the year end and uh, the focus is on financial reporting, getting those financial statements right and other disclosure documents. And therefore, we thought it'd be uh, good to hear from the regulator what's, what's on their radar screen, what are they going to be looking for, uh, so you can reflect on that as you work through that uh, year end uh, audit committee meeting. Um, as part of the panel discussion uh, after that, we're going to broaden out the discussion. We're going we're to touch on this issue of the quality of financial reporting and I'd even broaden that out further to say corporate reporting. Uh, for those of you that were at our last director series, um, I talked about a publication we put out, Is More Less. And uh, we've talked to a number of stakeholders in financial reporting areas, 
And uh, there's a concern that the, the, the reports are getting longer. Uh, it's getting harder to find key information. There's a lot of boilerplate. A lot of time spent looking backwards as opposed to forwards. Uh, so we're going to spend a little time uh, with the committee talking about, uh, and the panel talking about, what are the things that uh, might be done, and, and, and uh, hopefully get you uh, engaged in that uh, discussion. Um, I talked about clouds. Um, that uh, often brings to mind risks. So we're going to spend some time on what are some of the big risks uh, that are out there that uh, will impact your business, uh, but also need to translate into some things you think about at your, uh, at your audit committee and, uh, and talk about what audit committees should be doing in that area. So spending some time around the topic of risk. And then finally, uh, a subject that, that is really sort of the nuts and bolts, uh, that is internal control and certification. And it's been around for a while, but the issue is, is that on just autopilot? Are you getting everything uh, out of that? Because it really is one of your best friends in terms of protecting the corporation and directors. So we're going to spend some time talking uh, about, uh, about that. Now, as always, there's no such thing as a free breakfast or lunch, depending on your time zone. Uh, we are going to put you to work. There's going to be uh, two questions that we put out to you and get you engaged in your local settings around some of the issues that we'll be uh, discussing uh, this morning. Um, also, we will have some time at the end of the session for questions and answers. Uh, what I would say is do not wait to the end to get your question in. To make sure it gets uh, in front of us and answered, fill out the cards that are each, uh, at each of your tables, get them to the administrator. They will in turn will beam them to us here in Toronto and we'll do all our absolute best to, to spend time and respond to those at the end of the session. Now, uh, joining me in the studio today are a number of individuals, very experienced, uh, very talented, um, I know my short introductions won't do them uh, justice, so I would refer you to the handout package uh, where you've got uh, a fuller CV. Uh, but on my left is Brian Hunt. Uh, Brian is the CEO of CPAB, which stands for the Canadian Public Accountability Board, which um, oversees the auditors in terms of the work they do for uh, public companies here in Canada. And Brian, I think uh, you became the CEO in January 2009. Uh, a lot of changes and strong leadership uh, under Brian's uh, direction. Uh, clearly the topic we're gonna be talking about today, a uh, big push around audit, uh, upping the game on audit uh, quality. Uh, also programs to, to uh, uh, reach out and talk to audit committees to help them uh, in, this, uh, in this process. Uh, he's also very much tied into the international group of uh, audit regulators and chairs uh, their policy working a group. Now, I, I think there is a history before uh, CPAB, Brian, so I understand uh, CPA Ontario, where you were the president, uh, president of the Canadian Automobile Association, and, uh, and prior to that, uh, the president of a couple uh, companies in the private sector. So a lot of experience. Uh, Brian, we had you here somewhat last year in a, in a clip. Uh, we're delighted to have you here this year in person and to get, uh, get your comments. So welcome to the Director Series. Thank you very much, Don. Uh, next to Brian is uh, Patricia Kyrdo-Gru. And uh, Patricia is a senior executive with the National Bank. She's been there since 1991, I believe. Uh, she currently is a strategic advisor to the president and chief uh, executive officer of the bank. Um, also prior to that, she was the chief financial officer and EVP responsible for finance, treasury, and risk, which we're going to be talking about. So a lot of executive experience. Uh, no stranger to the boardroom. Uh, she sits on a number of boards. She's on the board of uh, Kojiko Cable, uh, Uniselect, where she sits on the audit committee, and uh, also on the human resource and compensation committee, and in fact chairs one of those. Um, in additionally, she sits on the board of the CASE, which is a, a very major institutional investor and sits on the risk committee. She's been recognized as one of Canada's most powerful women and has been in the Hall of Fame since 2007. So uh, with a lot, lots of experience and qualifications, uh, Patricia, we're, we're looking forward to your comments today. Welcome. Thank you, Bill. Now, next to Patricia is a face that I think uh, will be quite familiar. Uh, Cameron, we've had you on a couple times on the, the Director Series. Uh, Cameron, of course, is the Chief Accountant at the Ontario Securities Commission. 
obviously a very critical role in terms of looking at those year-end financial reporting disclosures uh, and issues and uh, be here to provide some insights um, around that. Uh, live through the IFRS transition, so it'll be interesting reflections on, on that activity. Uh, was also uh, the uh, Commission's rep in terms of the Audit uh, Quality Initiative. Now, for those of you on the West Coast, uh, there's a lot of Western blood in, uh, in Cameron, so a graduate of UBC and was with the BC Securities Commission. So, Cameron, welcome back, and we're looking forward to your comments. Thanks, Don. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, last but uh, certainly not least is uh, a face I, I know many of you will recognize. Uh, that is uh, Jim Goodfellow. Uh, Jim was, uh, was uh, formerly a vice chair uh, of Deloitte. Uh, in that capacity, he looked after a number of uh, major uh, corporate uh, entities uh, and always a true passion for, uh, for corporate governance. I must say he was the founder and moderator for the director series. So if uh, Jim jumps in and takes over moderation today, you'll know he comes by it honestly. Um, certainly on the governance front, uh, a lot of speaking, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, books written, uh, with Maureen Sabia, Spotlight in their Integrity in the Spotlight, which is a great read for, uh, for audit committees, and recently he's done something on internal control and certification, which we'll be uh, talking about today. Uh, now, when he left uh, Deloitte, it wasn't retirement. He's been doing a number of things, uh, sits on a number of boards, uh, large cap uh, in the retail sector, uh, small cap uh, company, and also with the uh, government where he sat with the Department of Foreign Affairs and International Trade. So a lot of governance experience that uh, Jim brings to the table. So Jim, welcome back to the Director Series, and we're looking forward to your comments. Great to be back, Don. 